Welcome back to the Paramodal Geometry Classroom. We are shooting some update videos to the existing series. We are squeezing one part in between the 14 and 15, let's call it 14.2. I want to be more specific on different types of bar offset to compensate for torque. A quick recall on a screen from the previous part 14 that explained the reason for bar offset. If you haven't seen that part, if you don't remember this picture, go and watch that before. Now let's talk about the different types. This is the photo of the mini plane. I believe mini plane was the first one to introduce gooseneck bars to the sport and big respect for this innovation because right now most of major paramotor manufacturers use gooseneck bars and it became kind of an industry standard. Now what mini plane did back in those times, I don't know, probably 15 years ago, that they made the bars of a simple tube and a very simple construction, but they made the tube bent a little bit to the side. Kind of a weird shape, but it makes perfectly sense if you know the physics behind. So let's look at the weight distribution of a paramotor pilot and combined. You recall this guy from previous chapters. I would guess the center of gravity of this guy is somewhere here. We don't need to be very specific, maybe a little bit higher, I don't know, but it's roughly here. Now the center of gravity of the paramotor is roughly here, and I'm not sure if you see this little dot. I made it little, so it's kind of in scale with the guy before, as the paramotor is a lot lighter, it's time lighter than, than the pilot. Now the combined center of gravity will look like this. If you look more closely on this picture, the center of gravity of the pilot is very close to the front of the gooseneck bar, actually very close. So most of his weight is actually loaded in the front of the gooseneck bar and just very little part of it is suspended on the frame where the harness connects to the frame in the back. And all the weight of the engine is hanging on the back side of the gooseneck bar. Now let's have a look how the mini plane geometry looks from above. This is the paramotor frame, the center of gravity of the paramotor with the engine, center of gravity of the pilot and center of gravity combined. Now you have these gooseneck bars a little bit skewed to the side so you get the carabine as a little bit off center. This chart is made for a paramotor that is torquing to the right so you need to compensate to the left. What it does that center of gravity of the motor, the pilot and combine is perfectly in line in the center line of the whole paramotor but the carabiners are moved to the side that means the left carabiner is closer to the center, the combined center of gravity and the right one is further away, so this one will be loaded more. So if the paramotor is torquing to the right, the overall weight is more loading the left side, so you will compensate for that. Super simple, great design we discussed in the previous chapter. This design, this concept is so genius that it's pretty much the most copied system of torque compensation of the bar offset. Many, many others did it in a similar way. Sometimes they have a CNC machined bar and then they add a little, little add-on on both bars on the same side to, to get the carabiner sideways. But it, it does exactly the same. It compensates for torque pretty well. But there's a but, obviously, as every solution has some disadvantages. The main problem is called the thrust line. The red line indicates the thrust line and, and the blue line indicates the center in between two carabiners. Now you see that just as the center of gravity, so the thrust line is off-center relative to the carabiners. That means the thrust is applied more onto the left carabiner than onto the right one. If it's just moderate, it's not really a problem. But if it would be more off-center, then it, would, it may eventually have some twisting tendencies. And this is actually the reason why some paramotors are not perfectly balanced for torque, because it would require larger offset, but the thrust line will not let you do it, because then, then the paramotor would kind of ten, uh, tend to twist. This was not an issue with the mini plane. Why? Because the mini plane has a very small engine and when if you do the same geometry for a monster that has twice as much power, then you simply just cannot do this offset on the carabiners large enough 
to compensate for that torque because then the engine would have the twisting tendencies. So with this system it's always a little bit of compromise. So you compensate not all the way but it's still pretty good. Super simple solution, has very good advantages. It's cheap, it's simple, looks good but not perfect for the flight. So let's discuss this solution. I've seen some paramotors, not that many, that move the whole bar to the side, basically adding almost two inches of spacer in between the frame and the bar on the right side in this case. What it does, it moves the carabiner more to the right, just as in the previous case, but unfortunately it moves the pilot as well, because as the whole bar moves, so does this point, and this is where the harness is connected to where the vast majority of the pilot's weight is loaded onto. So you actually move the pilot with the bar slightly to the side and while moving the carabiner away from the center of gravity, the center of gravity of the pilot kind of follows a little. So you see the blue line which indicates the middle between the carabiners and the center of gravity is still a bit weight shifting to the left, which is good, but not that much as in the previous case. So this torque compensation is far less efficient than just moving the carabiners only. And there is one more solution, and it's actually my favorite. To a big surprise of me, I haven't seen it that much in real life. Bars may stay in the neutral position, symmetric around the center line, around the thrust line. And you can move the tip of the bar, it kind of kind of made the bar bent at the tip, so the harness is suspended here. So instead of moving the carabiners, you move the pilot to the left. Carabiners stay nicely in the thrust line, so the thrust line goes perfectly in between the two risers. You have no twisting tendencies, even if you have a lot of power, but the whole pilot is moved a little bit to the left, and you can actually move not just the front of the harness, but you could also install the back of the harness a little bit to the side. And I think I've seen them doing it the same way, that even the top mounting points are a little bit to the side. So you move the whole pilot closer to the left carabiner, effect weight shifting much better. And uh, I've seen not so many applications of this geometry on the bars. The one that I recall is the fly products. Let's have a look how it looks in real. So this is the fly products and you can obviously see, so you have a bar which is pretty much straight and then here you have these nice CNC machine things just moving it to the right. This is the best way I have to offset the bars and it's the second best solution have to compensate for torque. Well, I have said that, that the last one was my favorite way of bar offset for torque compensation. This is not what we did with the Scout. On the Scout, the bars are completely symmetric around the thrust line. There is no offset, there is no compensation with the bars. Because we did a completely different kind of magic, it's called Scout Dynamic Torque Compensation, is our patented technology. So please watch the next video, chapter 15, where I'll explain all the physics behind. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. That's the best reward we can get for our effort. Me and Stefan, see you soon. You